Welcome to everything you need to know about Last Day on Earth survival. In this video, we'll share the most important tips and tricks that every beginner should know. I will share some general progression rules, and if you have any other tips and tricks, leave them down in the comments below. So first things first, make sure to follow the survivor's path. This is like some sort of a tutorial. It is pretty okay. A lot of the people get stuck at the settlement part, so if you get stuck here, don't worry. Some people find the settlement part boring. Some people don't even want to progress through that settlement, but hey, we're gonna talk about that settlement a bit later. All you need to know is that if you're somewhere here, just try to progress through the survivor's path. You will be able to do it. You have to try to level up as fast as possible because when you level up, you will unlock better weapons. For example, you won't even be able to craft crowbars if you're too low level. Later on, you will unlock better armor. You will unlock this metal pipe and you will unlock a bunch of other things. The fastest way to level up in this game is by talking to this healer. Most of the time you can get this brain weed seeds buff. As it says here, the experience you gain is increased by 100%. So you are getting double the experience. With this buff, when you are a beginner, you can clear green and yellow zones. If you have unlocked the farm location, make sure to clear that farm location. If you have the bunker alpha unlocked, make sure to clear bunker alpha with this buff. All of those locations have a lot of zombies. You get lots of experience by killing zombies. So that's why this double the experience buff is very worth it. If you run out of melee weapons, make sure to craft crowbars. They are pretty cheap. If you have a bit more resources, the shovel is also pretty decent and it's not that expensive. You can get iron ore by farming green, yellow, and red stone locations, then bring that iron ore to the base, smelt it in your furnace. You can get healing items by picking up grass. When you pick up grass, you get seeds. Grow those seeds into carrots. For that, you'll have to craft this garden bed. Also, you can transform these plant fibers into pieces of cloth using a sewing table. Sewing table is pretty easy to craft and you will have to craft it in the survivor's path. With those pieces of cloth, then you can start crafting bandages. Also, make sure to kill deer and dry their meat. It's amazing food. You don't have to use any fuel to get this jerky. Also, make sure to cook carrots because cooked carrots give more health. And the most efficient fuel in the game is charcoal. And to get charcoal, just smelt 10 pine planks. You will be using charcoal for everything to smelt iron, to cook your carrots, and a bunch of other things. Once you're done with all of the basics, your other main goal is to assemble this chopper. You can get the chopper by clearing bunker alpha or the farm location. We're gonna talk about bunker alpha a little bit later. The farm location is located up here. You will unlock this place pretty early on as you will have to go there in the survivor's path. To go to the farm location, you will have to assemble the crossing, and as you can see, it is pretty cheap. So before you go there, make sure to gather these resources. You will have to assemble that crossing only once, so don't don't worry about it. Also, I highly suggest you to learn how to clear this place efficiently, so make sure to check out my farm location guide. Link is down in the description. So in short, at the farm location, there is a barn. Once you find this key, open up this door, and here you will be able to find some chopper parts. You can get chopper gas tanks, chopper wheels, chopper forks. Probably in the worst case scenario, you can get at least chopper engines. That's always better than nothing. And here's a fun fact. You can assemble this chopper without even going to Bunker Alpha. You can assemble your chopper by just clearing the farm location. Your main goal at the farm location is to open up this blue box and this blue box has some nice loot. It has some armor. Sometimes it has guns. It has melee weapons. It has melee weapon blueprints. Sometimes it has copper. It's a great place to loot. It won't make you rich, but if done properly, you will definitely profit. The best location in the game is Bunker Alpha. Currently, it unlocks only at level 45. Just follow the survivor's path and you will unlock it eventually. Bunker Alpha has insane loot. You can get a bunch of guns here. You can get a bunch of other resources. Your main goal is to open up green, yellow, and red crates. Green crates usually have this loot. You can get a gun plus some armor. Yellow crates have even better loot. You can get two guns and some more armor. Inside of those yellow crates, you can also get chopper parts. And in the red crates, you can also get chopper parts and more guns and even more armor. The best way to get rich in this game is by learning how to wall trick. It is a little bit tricky, but with time, you will learn it. Without wall tricking, your progress will be a lot slower. Long story short, you have to keep walking back and forth to dodge the attacks from those frenzy giants or whatever other zombies you fight in Bunker Alpha. For more information about Bunker Alpha, make sure to check out my Bunker Alpha guide videos. Link is down in the description. So just by clearing the farm location and Bunker Alpha with this healer's buff, you will level up very, very, very fast. Your goal is to keep clearing both of those locations as often as possible. But if you get bored of clearing Bunker Alpha and the farm location, make sure to clear airdrops. They're very easy to do, and they have amazing loot. You basically don't have to do anything. Inside of airdrops, you can find a melee weapon plus a bunch of other okay resources. The second location that you must clear if you want to get a lot of loot is this rest up event. It is pretty easy. You basically don't have to do anything here. Just bring a gun, bring some armor, kill a few enemies here, and you will be able to get lots of loot. You can get here some guns. Also, make sure to bring empty bottles to get some fuel. And if you have unlocked your settlement, make sure to get your daily loot. It's free. It's daily. So make sure to claim that stuff, and you will be able to 
get a bunch of resources. If you have more time, then obviously you can start clearing Bunker Alpha, that farm location. But those three things are the most important things that you can do in the game without spending lots of time. Also, speaking of the settlement, some people say that the settlement is boring and it's difficult to progress here. And that is true. Some people get stuck in that survivor's path. They don't want to progress through the settlement. But my advice is progress. You don't have to build here a huge insane base. Your goal is to unlock these daily rewards and that's it. Every five levels in these expeditions, you get some more daily rewards and they accumulate. So I try to progress here as far as you can, maybe get to level 15, try to get to level 20. And if you don't want, you don't really have to build here this huge settlement because at least as of right now in 2024 in January, the settlement isn't really extremely useful. It is nice to get daily rewards and you absolutely have to get them, but you don't have to build a massive base here. Also kind of the best tip and trick about the settlement is getting enough pine beams. You will probably never have enough pine beams. So keep getting those pine beams if you have enough pine planks. Also, you have to remember that it's a game and not everything has to bring you profit. And if you enjoy playing in the settlement, if you enjoy developing these rooms, if you enjoy building new workbenches, then that's all what matters. It doesn't necessarily have to bring you profit. But once again, other than the daily rewards, the settlement doesn't really bring anything useful. Now, let's talk a bit about vehicles. Last Earth has a few vehicles and your second vehicle that you'll be building is the boat. You can get most of the boat parts in the sewers if you want more information on how to clear the sewers. Link is down in the description. There will be a video on how I clear the sewers as a beginner. However, once you unlock the boat, it is pretty useless. It does unlock some of these new locations. So you will be able to get sand. You will be able to get quartz and you will finally unlock this titanium or so you will be able to get titanium. But sadly, titanium is pretty useless in this game, at least as of right now. The next vehicle that you will get is the ATV. It's the hardest vehicle in the game. It is very difficult to obtain. If you are a free to play player, it will probably take you a few years to get it. You can get most of the ATV parts at Bunker Bravo. Bunker Bravo is located over here. Also, I highly suggest you to keep an eye on the Bunker Bravo event. Sometimes it appears over here. During that Bunker Bravo event, it's like twice easier to clear Bunker Bravo. So if you want to get ATV parts, wait for that Bunker Bravo event. And if you want some more information about Bunker Bravo, the video is going to be down in the description. Make sure to check it out. And don't worry about the ATV if you don't have it yet, as it's not really that amazing. You will unlock some of these locations over here. You will be able to go to the swamp. The swamp will unlock these ash logs. And with these ash logs, you will be able to upgrade your racks. You will be able to store more loot. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Also, getting ATV transmissions is pretty difficult. That is the most difficult part for free to play players. You can get some of those ATV transmissions at the gas station by spinning caps. Those ATV transmissions are very random. You might need a lot of and a lot of caps. And if you want more caps, you can get caps by clearing the laboratory. But it is very difficult. So I wouldn't suggest you doing that. But more on the laboratory later. And in this location at the port, you can do deliveries. And sometimes very randomly, very rarely, you can get an ATV transmission by doing those deliveries. And quite recently, we have gotten this transport hub. And sometimes in the transport hub, by opening up a special crate, you can also get an ATV transmission. But all of that is pretty rare and pretty random. So good luck to all of you with getting all of those ATV transmissions. And speaking of the port location, to unlock this port location, you do need like some sort of a vehicle. It's not really a vehicle, but you need to get a drone. To get the drone parts and especially these flight controllers, you will have to clear the laboratory. The laboratory is pretty difficult. You will have to use some guns. You will have to use some melee weapons. The location does change all the time. Sometimes you can get different debuffs, different buffs. So you will have to learn how to improvise in laboratory because you won't be able to wall trick every single zombie. So bring some melee weapons, bring some guns. Try to wall trick as many zombies as possible. Use guns where you cannot wall trick those zombies. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole strategy in the laboratory. You can get those flight controllers from the A2 and from the B2 boss. The laboratory in total has A1, A2, B1, and B2 floors. To get to the B2 floor, you have to clear all the previous floors. I wouldn't suggest you clearing B1 and B2 floors as those are pretty expensive. So if you want to get these flight controllers, just clear the A1 and A2 floor. Kill the boss at the A2 floor. And that's pretty much it. If you want more information about the laboratory, make sure to check out my video in the description about the laboratory. And other than that, the laboratory doesn't really have any valuable loot. It does have some caps, but it's not really worth your time. So once you assemble your drone, and if you don't feel like you have to clear the laboratory, probably don't worry about it. And now let me quickly share you some tips and tricks about base building because people constantly ask me what to do with the walls. So I wouldn't really advise you to build any walls at the very beginning of the game because level one and level two walls get destroyed by zombie hordes. So never ever craft level one and level two walls because that'll be just a waste of resources. If you want to craft walls, immediately craft level three walls. And if you don't have the resources for level three walls, then don't bother. As I said, zombies will destroy those level one and level two walls. It will require you to get oak in order to build level three walls and you can unlock these oak locations by going to this northern watchtower. You will have to assemble your chopper and you will have to have a generator. The generator is relatively easy to build. Go there and then you will be able to activate this northern watchtower. And here you will be able to get some oak.
oak logs, you will require to have iron hatchets. It is very time consuming. There is no tips and tricks on how to get more oak logs. Just farm as many oak logs as possible and bring them back to the base. And also, if you will ever want to raid in this game, I highly advise you to build level four walls. And those level four walls, aka steel walls, require a bunch of steel. You can get copper ore inside of these northern locations. So you can farm copper ore here. You can also recycle batteries, watches, and a bunch of other resources to get copper. Then you can smelt that copper into steel. To smelt copper into steel, you will require to get this refined melting furnace. And as you already know, you can get some steel and some copper inside of this farm location. You can get some steel or copper at the fourth floor. Again, all of those things are not guaranteed. Sometimes you get copper, sometimes you don't. So just keep gathering that steel, keep gathering copper. It will take you a really long time to get that. Set yourself a goal. Maybe get like three copper bars per day, five steel bars per day, or whatever amount of steel bars you can get. And eventually you will be able to build a base. I highly advise you to start building a three by three steel room. However, if you are more patient and if you feel like you can get more steel, then maybe start building a four by four steel room, a five by five steel room, as those rooms are more efficient. The bigger the rooms, the more efficient they are. And once you have that three by three steel room, then start expanding and little by little, you will be able to build that steel base. And now let's talk about raids. Raids unlock at level 150 to spawn these raiders at the base. Once you reach level 150, go to the radio, click here on another button, call those raiders, they will spawn here. You will have to do some tasks and then you will be able to do raids. Once you do all of these tasks, once you raid the base, you will have this skull up here. And if you have this skull, that means your base might get raided. And by the way, you are raiding bots and you are being raided by bots. So you are not raiding real players and real players are not raiding you. Also, you need to know that raiders cannot destroy level four walls. However, they can destroy level three walls. The best way to protect your base is to build obviously steel walls, but if you cannot build steel walls and if you want to raid sooner, probably store some loot on top of the lockers in Bunk Kral as raiders cannot get there. Try to build as many layers of level three walls, then perhaps build some level two, some level one outer walls. And chances are raiders won't get to the core of your base. However, sometimes raiders can still get to the core so it's all kind of random and that's why your goal if you want to raid is building a steel base also here is a fun fact if your base gets raided you will get a revenge raid if raiders have stolen something from your base and if you are lucky enough you will be able to get that stolen loot from the revenge raid all you have to do is just find that loot sometimes the base will be very huge and you won't be able to see all of the chests but sometimes the base is very small it'll have only like four five or six chests and most likely you will be able to retrieve all of your stolen loot raids are amazing to get all sorts of loot you can get healing items such as bandages, first aid kits, you can get food, you can get guns, you can get bricks, planks. Most of the raids are bad. However, occasionally you do get a really nice raid and that's why people do those raids just for those occasional really awesome raids. And let's talk about the blueprints, weapon blueprints. You can get gun blueprints inside of the police department by opening up green, blue, and purple crates. From green crate, you get common mods. From blue crate, you get blue mods. And from purple crates, you get purple mods. And a quick tip and trick, don't really exchange 10 blue cards for one purple card as that is pretty expensive. You're better off opening up 10 blue cards than one purple and you can get some melee mods from the farm location. Also, another amazing way to get blueprints is from the season pass. At level 33, you get three purple blueprints. Again, maybe you're watching this video a year later from now and maybe the season passes no longer have blueprints here, but at least for the past few seasons, we kept getting these purple mods. So check the season pass. Maybe you will be able to get some purple mods here. Also, keep an eye on the events tab. Inside of the events tab, sometimes you have the arena event Link is down in the description where you can learn more about the arena event. But inside of the arena event, you can get some purple mods, you can get some blue mods, you can get some purple mods. That place is phenomenal. Also, some of the weapons require carbon composites and a lot of you keep asking me how to get carbon composites or even factory parts. So the best way to get carbon composites is by clearing Bunker Bravo during the event. You can clear the second floor and here you will be able to get carbon composites. You get like what, from four to six or seven carbon composites. You don't really get a lot of factory parts. So I would suggest you to recycle full durability guns. By recycling full durability guns, you don't only get factory parts, but you also can get carbon composites. They are very difficult to get, but those are the best ways to get them. And if you'd like to learn more about the blueprints, make sure to check out my two videos about the blueprints. There I explain everything you need to know about them, the best blueprints that you should craft, and those links are down in the description. So those were the most important tips and tricks that every beginner should know. And if you have any other tips and tricks, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. Beginners are gonna love that. And for more tips and tricks, make sure to check out my last and our free to play playlist. And if you want something else, make sure to check out my Days Gone video or hop over to my channel, go to playlist, and there you'll find a lot of other games that are played here on the channel. If you're not subscribed yet, definitely make sure to drop the subscribe button and notification bell to not miss any future videos. And see you in the next one.